Good morning. <coughs> Today, I'll talk about mutual exclusivity between genomic alteration occurring across multiple cancer types. We know, okay. <laughs> we know that in spite of large heterogeneity, recurrent alteration frequently target few specific oncogenic pathways. And we also observed and recently showed that functional alteration targeting the same pathway frequently occur in a mutually exclusive manner. And we have here a nice example coming from the latest DCGA paper in which we show that inactivation of BRCA1 and BRCA2 uh, almost never co-occur. So to systematically identify genes that are frequently altered in a mutually exclusive way, we develop a method called MIMO that stands for Mutual Exclusivity Modules. MIMO integrates semantic mutation, copy number alteration, and allows the user to specify a set of alteration for one or more genes, for example, to include BRCA1 hypermethylation. After a frequently altered gene has been detected, we, we connect them using a background network. All the fully connected gene sets are then extracted, and alteration affecting each gene set or module are tested for mutual exclusivity. Only modules whose set of alterations show a statistically significant trend towards mutual exclusivity are then pulled out from a method as a result. MIMO has been successfully applied to several TCGA cancer projects, and I'm focusing today on five of them, including updated data set for the series of ovarian cancer and glioblastoma multiforme, as well as more recent projects like the colorectal adenocarcinoma, focusing on the non-hypermutator subtype, the uterine corpus endometrioid carcinoma, focusing again on the non-hypermutators and non-serious subtypes. And I will talk a bit more on invasive breast cancer, but among these five is the one for which we have a largest, the largest data set with full complete uh, genomic profiling. In each of these cancer, MIMO identified mutually exclusive pattern of alteration affecting uh, several oncogenic pathways, including RB signaling, P53 signaling, uh, DNA repair, and PI3K AKT signaling cascade. But today I will focus specifically on this, on this PI3K AKT pathway, including RTKs and RAS. This pathway is frequently altered across all these cancer types, and more interestingly by different mechanisms. I want to give you a first overview of a set of targets that have been identified by the method. And you can see how high percentages of tumors are altered in each cancer type. And it's quite interesting seeing the pattern of mutual exclusivity that characterizes alteration affecting these genes. Sometimes these patterns are cleaner, like for endometrioid or colorectal, where we have few targets highly uh, with, uh, altered with high frequency. Some other times, in, like in GBM or breast, where we observe a larger heterogeneity, we also observe some overlapping cases. But what probably you may, have already, you may have already noticed is that one of the cancer types that we introduced before is missing here, meaning ovarian cancer. Indeed, we did not find a strong signal coming from frequently altered genes in serious, ovarian cancer, in serious ovarian cancer. So we ask ourselves, are there low frequency but functional events affecting the PI3K AKT signaling cascade in ovarian cancer? And when we look at the core components of this pathway, we actually see that there are multiple low frequency events that target the PI3K AKT signaling, including RTK amplification, a rare but functional mutation in RAS and RAF, P10 downregulation, MAP2K4 downregulation. When we aggregate all this alteration, we can now sum up up to 24% of ovarian cancer tumors that have alteration in this pathway. And all these alterations show also a nice pattern of mutual exclusivity, even for we are looking here at rare event. And in conclusion, we can say that this pathway is actually altered in all the five cancer types that we analyzed. Sorry, can I go back? <laughs> yeah. I'd like to talk a bit more on uh, invasive breast cancer. As, as I said it, uh, before, we observe here the largest heterogeneity of alteration. This was somehow expected. We know that breast cancer is a very heterogeneous disease. 
that can actually be thought at least as two distinct diseases. And I'm referring here to the distinction between basal tumors and non-basal uh, tumors. Indeed, this distinction originally identified from mRNA expression signature, apparent is clear by looking at whatever kind of genomic or epigenetic alteration in breast cancer. So we ask if this pathway is altered preferentially one of the two subtypes or by different mechanisms in the two subtypes. When we first broke down the set of alteration that we uh, found, we see that up to 74% of non-basal tumors have alteration in at least one of the genes from the pathway shown here on the left, while only 24% of basal tumors have. So we ask, is the PA3K pathway altered by other means in basal tumors? And to answer this question, we went looking at a burden pattern of mRNA expression, meaning upregulated genes or downregulated genes independently of copy number and mutation status. And the first evident result that we have was that P10 is frequently downregulated in basal tumors independently of copy number and mutation status. You can see in this plot P10 expression versus copy number status, and all the yellow dots are basal tumors. So you can see that most of the downregulated samples are indeed basal tumors. When we went looking at the AKT level, at the AKT phosphorylation level for this tumor, we actually see that all the P10 downregulated samples show, on average, higher P, uh, AKT phosphorylation. We suggest that this event is functional, and P10 downregulated samples actually contribute to activate the AKT signal. P10 was not the only gene that we found with having an aberrant mRNA expression pattern. And indeed, we found a very interesting pattern for AKT-free expression in basal tumors. AKT-free expression in basal has a strong bimodal distribution. And we can see that up of to 30% of basal tumors have AKT-free overexpression. When we put together this observation, we actually see that we now have 50% of basal tumors that have alteration in the PA3K AKT signaling cascade. And alteration in AKT, overexpression of AKT3 is nicely mutually exclusive with downregulation of P10 in these tumors. So I'd like to give you a summary of the overall extent of alteration in the whole set of genes that we identified <coughs> from our mutual exclusivity analysis. And you can see from this heat map, each column is one of a cancer type that we analyzed. You can see, appreciate some simi similar pattern like P10, PIK3CA, R2, or PIK3R1, but are commonly altered across all cancer types, as well as some specific cancer-specific alteration, like IGF2 overexpression in colorectal, or EGFR amplification in glioblastoma. In conclusion, <clears throat> I'd like to stress once again that MIMO systematically identified mutually exclusive alteration targeting oncogenic pathway across multiple cancer types, in particular, today, I focused on the PA3K AKT signaling, which is consistently altered in cancer, and more, even more interestingly, by a large heterogeneity of mechanisms. Finally, I think it's important to stress that all this kind of analysis <coughs> across these cancer types have now the ability to unveil the underlying heterogeneity of the disease, both suggesting candidate therapeutic targets in each uh, single subtype. And with this, I would like to thank <coughs> all the people that collaborated with me, in particular, <coughs> sorry, in particular Chris, Nikki, and Ethan, who collaborated with me in developing MIMO, as well as analyzing all the TCGA data sets. Thank you. Thank you, Giovanni. Questions? Great talk. Um, one question is that uh, uh, with regards to uh, determining significant uh, mutual exclusivity, um, just from our observations of relatively, let's say, rare somatic mutation mutations or somatically mutated genes in tumors that it's pretty easy to find, let's say, a set of five or six genes that show that nice staircase pattern that implies mutual exclusivity. So what are the steps that you've taken, whether it's permutation analysis or some analytical um, statistical tests to, to sort of <coughs> you're correct. For if, you look, if you're looking at rare events, it's easy to find this uh, mutually exclusive pattern. In, in our case, we, test, we use a permutation test 
that uh, is basically a Monte Carlo Markov chain permutation strategy that preserves the number of alterations per genes and the number of alterations per samples. So in this way, we believe we have an accurate, we, we are able to preserve the cancer specificity in altering oncogenes and tumor suppressor as well as the heterogeneity shown by different samples. Giovanni, uh, that was a beautiful talk. I have a, a quick question. Could you speculate a little bit of, of what you think is, might turn out to be the basis for the different mechanisms of pathway alteration and the different types of cancer? Very broad, very, I'm asking you to speculate here. Honestly, I, <clears throat> I think it's a pretty common feature to observe this large heterogeneity in a lot of cancer show different mechan alternative mechanisms, but we know this alteration most of the time emerge randomly during um, but it's, it's, replication it's processes and are selected and if, uh, for the advantage that may give to the cancer cell to proliferate and yeah. altering the key pathways. I guess we're, we, we still have to figure out what, what uh, causes um, the, the different mechanisms to be pursued for the same pathway in different types of cancer. Yeah. It'll be an interesting question to sort out. Okay, thank you very much. Um, great talk. Um